Hello, as you know, I am Big Italy 42, and I'm here with a Daily Academy podcast for dailyfantasycafe.com. And for this podcast, I'm going to be talking about starting pitchers and the process that you use to select them for your lineups. Now, I'm going to go straight through like the article that we have below here, and I'm going to break down every single thing that I had in here to make things a little bit simpler on you. You can kind of listen to this in the background instead of reading through it, and this is going to make things a lot easier on you. So to start things off, most important thing, you need to know exactly what the scoring is on the site that you're playing on. So I'll give you the quick breakdown for the two main sites, FanDuel and DraftKings, and if you're playing on another site, find me on Twitter, go to their website. If you want to know any questions, I'm at BakerDilly42. I'll be more than happy to help you out figuring those things out for you. But without further ado, FanDuel scoring system, very simple. Starts with a a win is four points for any starting pitcher. And as you know, complex rules kind of with with the wins here. And, you know, sometimes the bullpen hurts you, things of that nature. And maybe your pitcher doesn't pitch deep enough into the game to be eligible for the win. But either way, a win very heavily weighted, four points on FanDuel. An earned run allowed is negative one point, and if you don't know what earned run is, look that up, fangraphs.com. Hit me up on Twitter for that one as well. I'll help you out with that. And uh, a strikeout is worth one point. An inning pitched is worth one point. There's also fractional scoring for partial innings. Say your pitcher goes five and two-thirds innings, he would get 5.66 points. So basically, what the best way of a fraction of one goes 0.33, 0.33, 0.34. For that, So that's all you need to worry about on FanDuel. Hits, walks, hit batters, none of those things hurt you. Just earn runs, strikeouts, innings pitched, and wins. Next up on DraftKings, more specific, um, it's the efficiency type of site. Kind of like we used to see on Draft Street if you used to play there for hitters as well. But for pitching here, win also four points, so still pretty heavily weighted. Earned runs also very heavily weighted, negative two points. Strikeout also worth two points. And an inning pitched is worth 2.25. So each out, uh, your starting or pitcher, your starting pitcher records is going to be worth 0.75 points. Each hit allowed is negative 0.6. A walk is the same, negative 0.6. Same with a hit batsman. Uh, complete game bonuses on DraftKings. This is where it's key to target aces. You get a two and a half point bonus for a complete game. A complete game shutout is an additional two and a half points, and a no hitter is five points. So if your pitcher goes Complete game, shutout, no hitter. You have 14 points just from the no hitter, the bonuses for the complete game, the bonus for the shutout, and the win. So, obviously, incredibly rare for a no hitter, things of that nature. But keeping that into account, I mean, on a site like FanDuel, there's really no bonus. I mean, obviously, you're going to get a significant amount of points anyway for going complete game, shutout, but no bonus there. So, next thing you want to check out is Las Vegas Lines. Tells you which team is favored, which pitchers are favored. It tells you handedness. It's going to tell you total for the game. And if your pitcher is favored, he's going to be negative. So a site I like to use is VegasInsider.com. Tells you where the line started, where it's going, kind of where people are betting. And if your pitcher, the higher the negative number, the bigger the favorite they are. So for instance, essentially a pick is going to be right in between negative 101 and negative 110. So both pitchers will be right around that that line. Clayton Kershaw, a lot of times we see him against a weak team, minus 200 or higher. So somewhere closer to the 200, higher than 150. For instance, most nights the biggest favorite is going to be minus 160, 170, something of that nature. If your pitcher is plus, they're an underdog. So you're obviously at a risk of not getting the win, much less percentage of getting a win. But you also want to target low run totals. So when you're looking at this, you want seven and a half, seven under, less the least amount of runs possible. If you get a game with six to six and a half runs, then you're in a great spot for both pitchers where Vegas not expecting a whole lot of runs on either side. So next up, you want to look at re- statistics. And once you've accounted for your scoring, your Vegas odds, you're going to look at specific statistics, right? So looking at a pitcher splits against right-handed batters and left-handed batters is key because we have a lot of a lot of teams that stacked with right-handers don't have many left-handers. A uh, good example of that is the Milwaukee Brewers. They have a lot of right-handed bats. And you've got other teams that are left-handed heavy. We've got a lot of left-handed bats for the Seattle Mariners. So 
What you want to do is you want to find your pitchers who are in the best spot against teams. So if you know the teams that are right-handed dominant, left-handed dominant, it's a big edge to be found. And an example that I used in the article here is Mike Leake. He allowed a 297 Woba against right-handed batters last season, which was a weighted on base average. If you want some more information about that, it's listed in the Daily Academy as well. Basically takes into account all factors when hitters get on base. More complex than batting average, much more. So it incorporates all aspects of that. But Mike Leake, on the other end, got crushed by left-handed batters. 357 Wolf allowed in last year in 2014. So what you want to do with Mike Leake, you want to look at him against right-handed batters. If there's a lot of left-handed batters, which if a team has a lot, they're probably going to look at sabermetrics here, look at the advanced statistics, and throw a lot extra left-handed batter too in the lineup. But you look at these things, and it gives you an extra little edge when you're looking into your starting pitchers, which are absolutely key and paramount if you're going to be successful in DFS. Pitchers, especially on a site like Fando, where you only get one. DraftKings, you get two. But you need to have good starting pitching if you're going to win. Next up, you want to take into account the team. And this kind of goes hand-in-hand with the last part where left-handed dominant, right-handed dominant. Most teams are more right-handed dominant. And an American League team is going to have eight hitters plus a DH, where a National League team will have eight hitters plus a pitcher. So obviously a pitcher facing an NL team is going to get that one spot where most pitchers, obviously we know, subpar hitters, and you're going to be generally lower run totals, and you're going to be in a better spot. So if you've got two pitchers, similar spots, similar Vegas odds, one facing the AL team, one facing the NL, you're going to go with the NL, the, t- the pitcher facing the NL team, because they're going to face a pitcher at the bottom of the order each time around the any order. So that gives you an extra added bonus there. And you want to take a look at how each team performs against a certain handedness of pitcher. For instance, the Angels were 273 against left-handed pitching last year, but just 254 against right-handed pitching. Colorado Rockies crush right-handed pitching. So you want to look into those things. Obviously, right now some teams have changed early in the season. But moving forward, you'll see kind of an idea. Most teams are very similar to last season. So you can look at those last year, two-year, three-year stats, kind of get a good idea. And then once the season progresses more, you can get a better idea of the current roster and how they're doing. Next up, you want to look at ground ball and fly ball rates. A really good pitcher that excels at keeping the ball on the ground. Uh, The league average is 44%, but you've got pitchers 50% and higher. Guys like Clayton Kershaw. um, Jake Arrieta was a really good one last year. And those are the kind of guys you want to target, especially if you're in a hitter's park. And it gives you a big edge because more easy outs, more double plays. They give up a walk, maybe they get that extra out. And, you know, especially when you take into account a guy who struggles in a hitter's park with fly balls, all you need to do is a small mistake and that ball's out of here. So uh, you Darvish is an example of the opposite end of this one where he's a very good strikeout pitcher. But his ground ball rate, very subpar, 36.3% compared to 40.9% fly ball rate. So you want to take into account all the factors, the park factors, things of that nature as well. Um, Next up, you want to look at whip, which is walks plus hits per innings pitched. And on FanDuel, you don't need these things as much as you do on DraftKings because obviously on DraftKings, each walk, each hit, each hit batman, hit, hit batsman is going to hurt you. There's no scoring penalty on FanDuel for walks or hits but there are for earned runs. So a guy who gives up a lot of base runners is going to hurt you on DraftKings. Could hurt you on FanDuel as well. You give up one home run with two guys on base, you're automatically down six points on DraftKings, three points on FanDuel, and you're probably in a pretty bad spot if you're looking for the win. So an average whip is 1.32. Pitchers who are 1.10 whip or lower, the best of the best. Clayton Kershaw, last year, historic season, 0.86 whip. So you look at these guys, they don't allow a lot of base runners. Even if they do make a mistake, much less damaging than a guy who allows a lot of base runners. So park factors, I already kind of touched on this. If you're new to MLB, DFS, course field is the place to be. Thin air, small or big ballpark, short field, places like that. You've got Yankee Stadium, that short porch and right field. You want to take a look at ball factors. Um, Places like Petco Park, Safeco, um, Giant Stadium, a lot of those places are really good pitcher's parks. So uh, Oakland, another one of those. You want to look into those, you can just Google that. Park factors, it'll give you a good idea um, of which ones allow a lot of runs, which ones don't. And then the most important thing you want to take a look at in MLB DFS 
aside from all these other factors, is strikeouts. So you see how heavily weighted not only wins, but strikeouts are. So that tells you how key Vegas odds and strikeouts are in your daily fantasy rosters. When you see guys who have a huge strikeout rate, for instance, Clayton Kershaw. I mean, as you can tell, he's he's kind of the pinnacle of starting pitchers right now. 31.9% strikeout rate last year. Very expensive every single time. And rightfully so, because he strikes out nearly a third of the batters that he faces, which is almost one per inning, which is insane. But a 10-strikeout game is worth 20 fantasy points by itself on DraftKings and 10 on FanDuel. And that's not even including the innings pitched during those times. So absolutely essential, especially in GPPs and cash games, to get yourself as many strikeouts as you can. If you're taking risk on a lower, cheaper pitcher, chances are they have a much lower strikeout rate than the elite guys. If you're deciding between two cheap guys, you want to consider a few things. You want to find the highest upside and high, GBP's highest floor in cash games. Here's a couple of examples as pitchers. Jake Odorizzi and Mike Leake. Going back to Mike Leake again. Leake's pedestrian strikeout rate is 18.2%, but Jake Odorizzi clocks in at 24.2. Leake's ground ball rate, 53.4. Odorizzi's is just 29.9. So based on these factors, if these are the two guys you're deciding between, likely would be a similar price. If they're similar favorites, Leak would be your cash game play with the higher floor, the higher grind, ground ball rate, not much upside with the strikeouts, but you anticipate more often than not you'll get yourself a quality start. Odorizzi would be the GPP play because of the strikeout upside. Um, two starter pitching websites like DraftKings, you could go with two mid-range guys, or you could go with an elite option and a cheap option. It's really hard to play two elite pitchers especially when you want to have any semblance of a lineup. Obviously, if both guys have a great day, you could still have yourself a nice time in cash games. But you want to make the guys with the highest floor. So you want to take the guys with the lowest run totals, all the factors I just talked about for your cash games, and the guys with big strikeout upside and you know that are less, less owned, going to be under the radar, but big strikeout rates. Those are the guys you want to look at in tournaments, the cheaper guys there. So... With that being said, that's going to wrap up the analysis here. For pitchers, if you have any questions, like I said, find me on Twitter at BigItaly42. Check us out at DF Cafe on Twitter as well. And I will be back again with some more helpful podcasts to help you out with some of this Daily Academy information.